this video I'll be explaining how client setup can be used to define the connections to various products. The client setup appears during the install process, but if at a later date you need to change your connection details or your connection details have become invalid, you can launch client setup by going to the start menu and selecting the client setup shortcut. In this window you can see that Connections are divided into two main groups. Local connections, where you can define a connection directly to a relational database, such as SQL Server or Oracle, or remote connections, where instead of defining connections to a SQL Server database directly or Oracle box directly, you can talk to a service, and that service can communicate over the internet. First of all, I'll explain local connections. You can see here I've got uh, two products. One is called AdventureWorks, which we use for demonstration purposes, and System. System is used for uh, storing all the security information and, and setup details. So we want to centralize the system product and make sure that all the clients are pointing to the same server. You can see I've got a choice between Windows authentication and database server authentication. Uh, in this particular case, I've chosen database server authentication. You can see the properties down on the right hand side of the screen, and depending on the connection type, these properties will change. For a SQL Server, I need to provide the server name, and there is a assist button on the right hand side that I can bring up a list of servers. Now if those servers uh, don't appear for whatever reason, usually it's because uh, things like ports have been blocked and, and it requires a bit of a setup on the server. For example, port 1433 and 1434 should be open on the server if you can't connect to it. I've provided a username and password and some timeout details. I can then test the connection and if everything is correct I should successfully connect. In the case of the system database, uh, if, if this hasn't been set up before you'll be asked if you want to create the system tables in the database that you provided. This is a once-off process and up at AdventureWorks you can see very similar process provide the server name and the database name and of course username and password details and then test the connection. Depending on the product that you're connecting to there may be an additional button down here where uh, setup, additional setup is required. Next I'll be explaining about remote connections. Now if you have a service up and running which is covered in another video and you do not wish to connect directly to the, the databases because of security reasons or because you want to connect over the internet or through the intranet, what you can do is disable local connections and enable remote connections and then put in the, the connection details to the remote server. You've got a choice of two protocols. Uh, one is TCP and the other is HTTP. You need to synchronize these with the settings of the server. I'm using TCP in this case because we found that uh, TCP IP is faster than HTTP in most cases. You need to provide a port number which needs to be the same as the server and also the server server name. In this particular case I'm using the intranet so I put in the server name, it could be an IP address or if it's in the internet I, I could provide a, a URL address and of course the server code which needs to be the same as the, as the service. 
if the service is password protected, you'll need to also provide the password. I'm going to test the connection now. And if the service is up and running, I should receive this message that I've successfully connected. Because communications are involved, uh, you're then asked if you want to do a performance test. If you say yes, you'll get an indication of how fast the communications are between the client and the service. In this particular case, I'm using the intranet, so my performance rating is 735. I have seen ratings over a thousand, and if I connect over the internet, uh, I would expect to see connection ratings 10 or higher. I've found that a connection rating of 4 is the cutoff point where it starts to become too slow. So we, the higher the number, the better. And then I'm asked to enable the connection. If for whatever reason you're finding that you cannot connect to the service, uh, just reconfirm your connection details that they are the same as the service and that your, uh, for example, your IP address or the server name is correct. Also, we found that, for example, if the ports haven't been opened on the router, the service will not be visible to clients over the internet. So there, there are a number of checks that need to be done on the service side to ensure that clients can access the service. It is possible to local connections and remote connections and save this and start ad hoc query so we can see how they appear when we're defining a query. Now I'm in the query window and if I select products you can see that the local connections appear at the top and then I've got my remote server. So based on this window, you can see that you can connect to multiple remote servers. The benefit of using remote services is that none of the data models need to be installed on the local clients. And you can centralize the, the connection details and also provide password protection to the service. All the communications between the service and the client is compressed and encrypted, so it is secure. For more detailed instructions on setting up a, the service, uh, please check out the other video on service setup. That concludes client setup.